Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about timing and rhythm. Timing and rhythm. Are they important? I'd say so. As to a musician, yes. Do I practice them? Not as much as I should. Do you practice them? If the answer is yes, you can move on to the next video. If the answer is no, then check this video out. I think you'll find it very useful. So bear with me. When I was growing up as a child, I would play the piano. And I remember I never had any way to check my timing or even thought about timing really, apart from counting how long each note was. The actual time of the piece was only practiced when my teacher gave me a metronome. Now what's a metronome? Well, check it out. This is an old school metronome. You wind it up, it's basically a clock. You put this uh, middle piece, either down the bottom is the fastest, up the top is the slowest, and anywhere in between is other tempos indicated by the numbers on there. So 60 BPM is 60, ding, two, three, four, ding, and you just play along to it. Now as a child, I thought this is a very majestic looking thing. It's fun to make it go as fast as it can and as slow as it can and watch that thing swing. I practiced it a few times, not as much as I should have done. Now skip forward to when I was in music school, people would say to me, oh Aaron, when you play, you kind of speed up a bit. So I knew I had to work on my timing. It's important because you don't want to speed up. Now, why don't you want to speed up and slow down? Well, sometimes you might want to. Sometimes it's part of the song. If it's not part of the song, and be honest with yourself here, don't do it. <laughs> it's not good. Because if you're in a band, everyone needs to play locked together, right? In time. Some people feel the drummer, they say, oh, the drummer, it's their job to play in time, to keep like a metronome for us. No, it's not their job. Everyone in the band should have great timing and should just use the drummer as a guide. When you play solo, if you're strumming a really cool groove and someone's tapping their foot and clicking their fingers, if you suddenly start speeding up, you start to lose the connection with them. And then they don't want to get up and dance anymore. They don't want to like sit there and get into it anymore. So even subconsciously, they might feel something's wrong. That's not good. Um, if you're looping or recording in a studio, of course, in a studio, if you have horrible timing, they can go in after the fact and fix it although it will cost you money while they go in there and fix all those problems and you'd rather not have them in the first place. Looping live, of course, you cannot have bad timing because if you, if you, don't, if you know about looping, you have to record on the first beat. So one, two, three, four, one. You have to hit that next one with your foot in time with the strum of the guitar. Otherwise, the whole thing goes off and anyone can tell there's a problem. So yes, timing is very important timing and rhythm and groove which is all part of the same thing so how do we practice this well you do have to get that metronome out you do have to you do have to practice to the metronome there's no other way we're not born with amazing timing we're born with a heartbeat that goes slower and faster but we're not born to play a guitar and really feel that groove i mean i certainly wasn't so that's why i get a metronome i'm going to use an app on my phone now, a free one you can get, which is great, is Soundbrenner. Soundbrenner. Just type that in. Download it for free, and it will look like this. To some, it may look overwhelming. What are all these controls for? Well, don't worry too much. The great thing with these apps for the phone is that they can be very advanced, much more advanced than the one I showed you before. But for now, just set it to 80 BPM, which is beats per minute. It's quite, it's quite slow. And everything else should just be fine from, the, from, from loading it up. Put your volume to maximum so you can hear it and press play. You get the sound and the visual indication as well. One, two, three, four. The high one is the one. One, two, three, four. Now what I want you to do to start with is just count to it in time. Two, three, four, one, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I want you to do that for quite some time until you really feel it's very, very comfortable and natural. And this is the kind of thing you can just do for five minutes every day. You can even do this on a train. You put headphones in and, and tap, you know, you, this rhythm can be practiced anywhere, which is also great. Even if you hear a song on the radio, like a dance track, which, which has presumably been quantized in the studio to be perfectly in time just tap along to it always be always be like moving and tapping and thinking about this stuff it will really help when it comes to playing 
And of course, you'll move it forward maybe 10 BPM, so 90, and do the same thing again. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Same thing, move it up again. So we're just using our voice. Very important to be able to count aloud in time, okay? Now we're gonna start using our body. So why are you not using the guitar, Aaron? You're a guitarist. Well, I think that you should get the rhythm in your body first. So just bear with me. This won't take long, you know. It's just a good foundation. If you, you can't play the instrument in time if you don't understand timing yourself. So let's do the same thing again. One, two, three. And just clap in time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Really listen. Now, don't just sit there like a statue. Nod your head like you do when you hear a cool piece of music. Tap your foot like you do when you're playing your guitar. Get your whole body involved. So again, two, three, and your voice. One, two, three. I'm, move, I'm tapping my foot, I'm clapping my hands, and I'm talking with my voice. So I'm saying the numbers out loud. And nodding my head. And you could even move your body too if you want. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Really get into it. One, two, three, four. One. But really listen to. One. And same again. Increase 10 BPM. 10 BPM, just keep going until you're going quite fast. Great, so now you've got your body locked in, you're tapping your foot, now we can transfer it to the guitar. Let me grab the guitar. Okay, so I'm gonna keep tapping my foot, nodding my head, because that helped before, right? But this time I'm playing my guitar. So I'm gonna keep it very simple for you in case you're an absolute beginner. Here's a G major chord. Okay, you, know, you probably know that chord, right? We're just gonna play that on beat one. So let's do that again. Don't just come straight in. Give yourself a few bars to count and tap. Lock in the groove first. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Get ready with the strum. Three, four. One, two. Even move your hand, look. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, now we're using our body, we're listening, and we're strumming. Now, also, increase it by 10, increase it by, and as you get to like a real song or a harder piece of music, don't increase it by 10, increase it by one or two. Just very gradually, gradual, gradual, gradual. Some, you know, they say if you can't play something slow, you can't play it fast, and I'll show you why. If we play at 60, the G major scale, do you know the G major scale in this position? And have you heard people play it like this? Right? You probably have, right? I might be exaggerating it a little bit, but let's see what happens when I try and play it at 60. Two, three. It's harder because it's longer to wait in between the beat. One, two, three, four. And more time to think about what you're playing. So the danger is you'll be too early or too late. I find it much harder than, say if I'm at 90 BPM, check this out. Again, let yourself tap it and feel it first. Don't just try and come straight in. It's, you, you need to readjust the new tempo. One, two, three, four. There's less way in the round. There's less time to think and wait. So it's actually harder to play slower with everything. It's really hard to play stuff really slow. Okay, the really fast shredding stuff is hard too, but it's hard to play slow. So always start slow and then get faster. And then once you get up to like 120, you're starting to get quite fast here. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one.
So again, hard for different reasons because it's faster, right? So that's single notes and it's chords. With the chords, you could try other chords. Why not try a song? Say you're working on a song which goes A, D, F sharp, minor, E. And the song goes... Um, so that's the song, right? And you really want to be in time. Well, first of all, sing it in your head, work out the time. This has a, a button called tap and you can tap that and it'll work out the time for you. So say, say, so sing the song. Da, da, da. Ba, ba, ba. Tap your foot. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, that's definitely how the song goes. Da, da. If it's a real song, you actually sing it. That's a good tip before you start playing the song. Kind of sing it in your head, and then start, and then can't use that as a metronome. Sing it to figure out what the tempo is. You know, imagine it playing in your head. Da, 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 da. So it's saying it's one, one, eight, basically. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. So. Don't forget to move. Once you're feeling that you've got it, of course, you can stop the metronome. You could, because you're not going to have that playing. Now, some some bands actually have headphones in and hear that while they're playing on stage. But chances are you won't. You'll be sitting and playing like me. So then, you are the metronome. So move that body, tap that foot. And hopefully you'll be better now because you've been practicing to a metronome. Now, should you speed up? Should you slow down? I mean, sure. Sometimes you want to speed up. Sometimes you want to slow down. If songs do get faster and slower, especially at the end, you start to slow down, maybe right to finish, or you maybe you increase the tempo in a, in a particular section, that can be very musical. Um, some styles of music even want that they want you to play slightly behind the beat or slightly ahead of the beat. But again, you can't do that unless you know what the beat is. So it's really important to know what the beat is. And this is the beat. With this metronome, you can't get away from it. That is the beat. Can you play to that in time? If you can't, you're gonna have problems in the future. So I really suggest, if you've got a smartphone, buy or, buy or download that free app I told you about. Get yourself a metronome, if not a real physical one. And practice every day, even five minutes to start with. Just start working on your timing. When you learn a song now, learn the notes, learn everything, but then sit down and play it, figure out the time, the, the tempo, the speed of the piece, and then slow it down and build up to that tempo. And maybe even go past that tempo so you know you can play it faster. But then on the performance day, you're confident because you've played it faster and now you're playing at the actual correct, correct speed. So there we go. I think it's really important. I'm really enjoying using this. I'm gonna be using this going forward and I'll be talking more about this in the future. So if you enjoyed this, please do subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. The more subscribers I get, the more incentive I have to make these videos. And I've got plenty more content coming real soon, trust me. Um, so get yourself a metronome and please practice to it as often as you can. If you've got any thoughts or comments on this topic, then leave them in the comments below and we'll follow up. All right, until next time.